the uh, subtitle of this talk is Old Irishman Not Being Funny. So <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a great honor to introduce the author and my friend, Robert Sullivan. I've known two geniuses in my life. One is dead, and the other, Robert Sullivan, is alive. Although that Robert Sullivan is not the Robert Sullivan here with us this evening. <laughs> not exactly, but uh, more about that in a moment. First, this Robert Sullivan is the author of seven extraordinary books. Meadowlands, A Whale Hunt, How Not to Get Rich, Rats, Cross Country, The Thoreau You Don't Know, and the one that brings us here to Delancey Street, My American Revolution. In my unhumble unhum opinion, each of these books is, in its own way, a masterpiece. Wonderfully idiosyncratic, uniquely incisive, each is an investigation of the American mindscape and soulscape interrelated with the American landscape. Each confronts the obvious, whether a garbage dump comes swamp, or a the species of despised rodents, or a family road trip, or a transcendental windbag, and allows us to see what we didn't, and what we couldn't, or we didn't want to, the spiritual, historical, existential connections that expose, subvert, demolish our comfortable presumptions, and require us to perceive people and places, and yes, R-A-T-S, with fresh eyes. I've been amazed, enlightened, educated, entertained by Robert Sullivan's books, none more so than My American Revolution. Until I read Bob's book, I thought I was reasonably conversant for a college graduate of 40 years ago about the American Revolution, a war we all know fought mostly in Massachusetts, Virginia, and the Carolinas, a war in which the heroic Continental Army barely survived an epically punishing winter in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. One after the other, Bob demolishes these myths and gives us a new war centered around Morristown, New Jersey, and the Watchung Mountains. Yes, you heard me right, the Watchung Mountains. A war 80% of which was fought on a terrain visible from the top of the Empire State Building. Truth be told, however, as well as admiration, I have a grievance with Bob. We're both Irish so, and writers, so of course we have to have grievances. I have been hurt and deeply disappointed on a personal level by one of Bob's books. Five years ago in the fall of 2007, I reviewed How Not to Get Rich for Commonweal Magazine. I appraised it as, quote, a profoundly funny book. A year later, in the fall of 2008, in the midst of an act of collective sati in which the Rajas of Wall Street dragged America and the world's economy onto their flaming funeral pyre, I realiz realized that Sullivan hadn't been kidding at all, that instead of farce, he'd been writing prophecy, that he, d that he disguised wisdom as whimsy, and failed to include among the surefire ways not to get rich, such as majoring in anything with the word medieval in it, <laughs> or becoming a professional mandolin player, two of the most obvious ways of all of not becoming rich. First, believing anything that anybody at any time says on Wall Street. And second, from my perspective, most important, investing as I did your entire life savings in a 401k run by AOL Time Warner. <laughs> now, as well as a contributing editor to the Vogue and the father of the septet of books, Sullivan is co-author, along with his patient, long-suffering wife, Suzanne, of two incredibly talented children. Louise, an extraordinary singer and musician, who I hope will make it here this evening, and Sam, who is currently attending Yale, which uh, Bob tells me is a four-year institution in either Hartford or New Haven. Let me begin our discussion by pointing out the fittingness of discussing my re uh, American Revolution here on Delancey Street. The Delanceys were a prominent Huguenot family who fled to England and Ireland in the 16th century. A branch of the family subsequently emigrated to the colony of New York, where they became major landowners. Their estate included the place where you now sit and I now stand. During the Revolution, the Delanceys were among New York's most steadfast loyalists. Oliver Delancey joined General Howe on Staten Island in 1776 for the Battle of New York and raised and equipped the Delancey's Brigade of three battalions consist consisting of 1,500 loyalist volunteers 
and served as commanding officer on Long Island. The Delanceys fled New York at the end of the Revolution. They left behind a street with their name on it that in the 19th century fell under the political sway of one of New York's great ward healers, Big Tim Sullivan, an ancestor of Bob's, the so-called King of the Bowery. The western end of Delancey Street was subsequently renamed Kenmare Street in honor of Sullivan's mother who fled her native village of Kenmare in County Kerry during the Great Potato Famine. I might add, in the 1932 film Taxi, James Cagney plays an Irish cab driver who can speak Yiddish, prompting a cop to ask, what part of Ireland do you come from? <laughs> Cagney replies, Delancey Street. <laughs> As I mentioned at the outset, the real Bob Sullivan couldn't be with us tonight. That Bob Sullivan had a previous engagement playing the mandolin with the Society for Medieval Studies of Elizabeth, New Jersey. Thanks, however, to a groundbreaking cooperative effort on the part of DreamWorks Studios, the Disney Animation Workshop, the Pentagon's 3D Android Project, and the Tenemy Museum, we have this digital facsimile <laughs> that is being mind managed by the real Bob Sullivan, Bob the genius from the other side of the Hudson. So let's welcome Bob Sullivan. So, uh, Bob, let's cut to the chase. What yeah. drew you to write this book, Book for the American Revolution? Um, I just, you know, I, we think we, everybody thinks they know everything there is to know about the American Revolution. Uh, uh, I, I'm just thinking of all the Robert Sullivans I know, and most of them uh, you you knew first. I think I so there, there are a lot of Robert Sullivans, uh, and I, 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 it might not be me here tonight. But um, thank you so much, Peter. I, this we should just stop right there because uh, I'm so happy. Um, and also, that's fine. I can read from my book. I've just read your <laughs> stuff. Yeah, it's a. It'd be Not a better night. I know that. Like I that. know. I know that it would be a better night if we just got to your book. Um, so, Jack, do you have my book? I can read it. They're all up there, to ready to ready to be sold. So, um, uh, you know, it's I, when I when I write books, uh, it's it's sort of how long can you put off not writing that book and. Uh, so you try to just not write books for a long time. I won't write that one. I wrote, won't write that one. And then a couple books or ideas just keep coming back at you. They don't let you go. And and one of those, and I and I kept saying, don't no, the American Revolution. Don't write a book, of, you know, because there are a lot of them. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's there are a lot of them. And um, so, but I couldn't I couldn't beat it down. And it's also one of those things you grow up around here. You hear about the war all the time, but it's kind of foggy. And 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 then this. The other project that kind of, you know, turns out to be one of my big, you know, projects or something is is just to look at look around at the city and, and look at landscape and and which is a really boring yeah. word, but you know, to look at where we are and, and 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 so to go back to the strategy of the land, you know, so that got me to the war. I, I mean, I'm serious. The book is an absolute revelation. I did think I knew about the American Revolution. To, f to discover that the cockpit of the American Revolution was not Virginia, but New Jersey, is a kind of, you know, I mean, you don't mention Schnucky in the book, but uh, <laughs> the thought of, why don't we know that? How did that escape history? And did you start out knowing that New Jersey, uh, that you could see the no. entire revolution from the Empire State Building, or did you discover that in the process of Well, writing? somebody reminded me the other day that I used to go, I forgot all about this, you know, we, we lived in Oregon for a lot of the 90s, my family and I, and, um, but I, before I went to Oregon, I used to go have lunch all the time at the top of the Empire State Building. I remember this now. And I remember I was very happy after I wrote the Rats book, a bunch of guys who were tour guides at the Empire State Building gave me, it's okay to say this, right, free passes to the top of the Empire. And that was great. And you used to have lunch up there. And just, you know, it's kind of obvious, but it's a great view. And so... Um, <laughs> really? And really, really <laughs> great view. But I, I just remember... I remember as a kid reading about Lincoln, a Abe Lincoln, uh, and him saying, you know, uh, this is where it all happened. I know, and he was trying to get votes in Jersey, I'm sure it was, probably then it was a swing state. Now, but he, he, and he kept saying, I know that reading all about the war when I was a kid, that the, the war happened here, it happened in New Jersey. And, um, and so, so there was always that idea, and then when, you know, if you hang out and you start doing the math, wow, most of the battles were here. But, but, and 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 then you get into why why did Valley Forge become the the famous winter? And you sort of look at anniversaries and the anniversary of the Constitution, 
uh, 